In this video, I'm gonna take you through step-by-step -step how to create a kids activity book featuring maze puzzles that you can sell on Amazon KDP. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me here today. My last video was a really fun one where we took a look at a publisher who is making $2,500 per month from selling a kids maze activity book on Amazon KDP, exactly like the one that we are going to make today. And in that last video, I promised that I was going to show you how you can create these books for yourself too and that's what today's video is going to be all about. Mazes are the type of activity or the type of puzzle that you can't really create yourself just by drawing it or using something like Photoshop or a graphic design program is something that you need help with and I'm going to show you what I use to create maze puzzles. Now there are a couple of things that you need to do before you get to making the maze and the first thing really is to decide what age you are going to target with your book. This is especially important with kids because creating a book for kids aged four to six is going to be massively different than creating a book for kids aged eight to 10. And your puzzles are going to have to reflect that. So a puzzle for a four-year-old are going to be much easier or a bit more simple than the ones that you would make for a 10-year-old. Then the next step is to decide how many pages or probably more importantly, how many puzzles you want to include in your book. Sometimes you see puzzle books for adults and they'll contain maybe a thousand or I've even seen some books that contain 5,000 puzzles in them but generally you don't really want to do that for kids. When it comes to kids keeping it simple and short is much better. If you give a kid a huge thick book with thousands upon thousands of puzzles in it they're most likely just going to get overwhelmed. So personally I would say keep it to a maximum of 100 puzzles. And at this point here we are also going to have to come up with a theme for each puzzle. And the difference between adult puzzle books and kids puzzle books is that you have to do more than just put a puzzle on a page for kids and with adult puzzle books, you can get away with that, just putting a puzzle on the page and nothing else. But kids need more than that. They need images, they need scenery, they need sort of a story in the background to keep them interested and stimulated by the puzzle. And we do that by using fun images and really fun fonts and creating some kind of story around why they are completing that maze puzzle. Coming up with a whole bunch of different ideas for themes can be, can be pretty time consuming, but this is one of those instances where AI can be really useful. We're going to head over to chat GPT and I'm simply just going to write, give me a list of 100 themes for maze puzzles for kids for a puzzle book because I'm going to have 100 puzzles or 100 pages within my book. And in less than a minute, within just a few seconds, I have a list of 100 different themes that I can use for each of my puzzle pages. So I don't have to sit and try to come up with 100 different ideas to have or different story ideas to have on each page. ChatGPT did that for me in like 30 seconds. Now I'll go through each of these themes and create a maze puzzle around that topic. So let's go do that. I'm going to be using two types of maze puzzles for my book which I'll go through and I'll show you. I've showed these two tools many times in videos on my channel. It's the puzzle tools that I've been using for the past couple of years now. The links for these tools are down in the description box below. The first one that I'm going to be using is instant maze generator and the second one I'm going to use is hand drawn mazes. Now they just create two different types of mazes and I do like to have a variety of mazes within my puzzle book but if you prefer only one type of maze then you can just get access to whichever maze tool that you prefer. I'm going to start with Instant Maze Generator and I'm just going to create a collection and this tool is the kind of tool that creates these sort of shaped mazes and so going through some of these topics that were provided by AI the first one I'm going to do is an underwater one although it came up with the title underwater adventure I'm going to do something more like under the sea now first thing is I just want to make sure my settings are correct I do want to have an 8.5 by 11 I'm going to take off numbering because I'm most likely going to have images and things that will cover up the numbers and then I'm just going to add a maze to my page. I'm going to start with a circle maze and what I want to do is adjust the difficulty level because this is going to be for children probably around age five, six, seven. And so we want to make it in line with that sort of skill level. You don't want to make it too easy, but you don't want to make it too hard. If it's too hard, they're going to lose interest. If it's too easy, they're also going to lose interest. So let's do something 
maybe like that. Now you can also adjust the thickness of the wall. So if you want your lines of the maze really thick or really thin, you can adjust that. And we're just going to leave it at that. Now I have some images that I'm going to use on this page. And so as well as the actual maze tool, I recommend you get access to some images from a stock image website. You can add the option of having images included that come with this tool. But personally, I prefer sourcing and using my own images that I get from all different places, just so that it gives me the ability to add a little bit more uniqueness to my book. You can also use your own fonts too, if you have certain fonts that you want to use. But these tools, these tools do have lots of fonts that come with them that you can use. And so most of the time I just use the fonts that are provided with this tool. Now to add some images in here, I'm just going to go to the upload area and add my images. So what I've uploaded here is something to go into the background and then a couple of images to sort of create the story of this maze. So I'm going to add the little background in. This is just to add some fun. And I'm just going to put it down here on the bottom so that the maze will sort of sit in it. And then I want to move it to the back. Maybe make it a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to go back to the wall and in it a little bit more to match the stock image because the lines of the stock image are not that thick. I also want to change the maze color to be black because the images I'm using are black. Okay, now the next thing I do want to do is just change the entry point because I would rather have my mermaid image over here maybe. And then the end and confirm because now I can add in my mermaid over here. So she's just going to sit there at the entry point and then we're adding a shell and basically the story is that the mermaid needs to find her way to her shell and the shell's just going to sit in the middle of the maze. I am going to add in a title as well. I'm going to move it over here. It's going to just say under the sea and this is where we can use these fonts. There's hundreds and hundreds of fonts in here that you can use going to make it a bit bigger. And if you wanted to, you could even write something under here, a little sub headline saying help the mermaid find her way to her shell or something like that. But I'm just going to leave it like that for now. And that was pretty quick. That only took a few minutes to add all those elements in. And you can see how it just makes it so much more interesting, so much more visually appealing for the child to want to complete the maze and do the puzzles. And using these types of images, these, when I search for these images, I usually search for something like doodle. So mermaid doodle or ocean doodle or something like that and it brings up these black and white images and then this could even become a coloring page after they've completed the maze if they want to they can color in the images as well. So from here I'm going to add a second page and we're going to create a second puzzle and chat GPT had outer space so I'm going to do an outer space one and with this one I'm going to do this sort of hexagon style of shape and we basically go through and do the same thing we just adjust the difficulty level and you just have to use your own judgment there. If you're not sure if you don't have kids, if you're not sure what abilities kids have at the age that you're making a book for, go have a look through some books that are aimed at the age of child that you're creating a book for and have a look at how difficult their puzzles are. And also read the reviews to make sure that the people buying the book were happy with the difficulty level of the puzzles and use your judgment on what other books have in terms of how difficult their puzzles are and that the customers were happy with those puzzles that were in that book. I'm going to add some images for this one as well. I'm going to do the same sort of thing here. So I'm going to add in sort of like a interesting background or interesting image just to sort of frame the maze. And again, send it to the back because the maze needs to be on top. I'm going to adjust the wall again to match the images that I'm using and change the color to black again to match. Now I'm just going to move the maze around to fit in. And I'm going to adjust these custom points again because I want them to more match where my images are. And then the end is going to be over here somewhere. Bam that. So the rocket is sort of entering here and the rocket and the astronaut are sort of just trying to find a planet. So this planet can sit over here at the exit point. So basically you need the astronaut and the rocket to make it to the planet. And then let's add in a title and we will just call this one Space Adventure. And I'm just going to search through for a font. 
And so hopefully you can see how fairly simple it is to create something that's really fun to look at. And that's what kids want. Kids learn better when things are fun, when they're enjoying it. And so you want to sort of try to include that on your pages as much as you can. And I would say spend as much time on that as you as you can, putting in these creative elements for them. Now, I'm not going to go through and create every single page on this video of a 100 page book. But basically, once you are finished, when you have finished creating all your pages, you are ready to download your file that you will be able to then upload into your KDP account. If you have created your whole book within this tool and there is nothing else that you want to do with it, you basically just want to take it from this tool and put it into KDP, then you can just download it as a PDF and it is all ready to upload to KDP. For me, because I'm going to be using another maze tool, so eventually I want to combine them together to create my one book. For this part, I'm going to download it as a PowerPoint document so that I can easily add the next lot of mazes that I'm going to create and combine them into this one and end up with one document full of the different types of mazes. Okay, so for my third puzzle, I'm going to go and use the hand-drawn maze tool. And these ones just give more creative, fun and unique mazes that you can add to your books. So down here, we have all the different types of mazes that you can create with this tool. They're really fun. They're really unique and really different. And they do cater to all different age levels as well. And these are the types of mazes that you can really create a story behind. So in this one, I'm going to go with the jungle safari theme that's next up. And I think I'm going to create a maze that has one entry point and three exit points, which I believe is this one here. So let's have a look. So once you go into the type of maze you want, there are also lots more of different variations of that specific maze. So I'm just going to look for the one that's going to best suit the idea that I have in my head. I might give this one a try and you may have to pick a couple of different ones before you get exactly the look that you're going for. Let's just expand it a little. Now this one's going to be monkeys and the monkeys are going to be looking for a banana and it's who gets the banana. And so let me upload some images. Okay, I've got my three monkeys and the banana that they're looking for. So I'm going to add the banana. The banana is the exit point because they're they're trying to find the banana and who's the lucky monkey that's going to get the banana. And then we want to add in our monkeys. So one monkey is going to start at this point. And you kind of do have to fiddle around with it a little bit. And I basically just sort of move things around and just try and fit them in where they're going to look best until I'm happy with how it looks. I'm go also going to add this background on and see if I can make this work and make it sort of just a little bit nicer, the page to look at. So that sort of looks like fun. And if there's room, you can add a title. So you get the idea. I would just mess around with it, move things around until I'm really happy with where they are, where they're located, that everything looks really visually appealing and that I think a child is going to be happy looking at that page. And so once I've gone through this tool and created all the pages with these types of mazes on them, I would also download this one as a PowerPoint. And then I would go into PowerPoint and combine those two documents together to create one file. And so I'm not going to go through and show you the rest of the pages being made because hopefully this has given you an idea, a really good idea of how to use these tools. It's very simple and easy to use from these few examples that I've shown in this video. Once you have finished creating all the pages and you are ready to download it either from the tool or from another program like PowerPoint, if you're using something else like I would be, you can then download it from this tool in whatever format that you prefer. Once everything is totally complete and you're ready for your book to have the file to be able to go into your KDP account and upload, then you just need to create a PDF document. And that is the document, the interior file that you need to upload into your KDP account. So the next step is going to be your cover. If you feel that you have the skills to create your own cover, by all means, go ahead and create it yourself. But do keep in mind that the cover is what sells your book 
or at least what gets the customer to click on it initially out of the sea of other thumbnails on the Amazon marketplace when they're in the search results. So if you can't design something as good as, if not better than the best selling books in your niche, then I would suggest having the cover made for you. You can get pretty affordable covers made with places like Fiverr and you can have a cover design sent to you within a few days. Whether you make the cover yourself or you have it made for you, once you have that file for the cover, then you are ready to upload your entire book to KDP. So those two files, the interior file and the cover file, that's all you need for that book to be put into your KDP account and then submit it for approval, which hopefully it will be approved within a couple of days. And once it's live on the Amazon marketplace, you can get to work setting up ads if running uh, paid ads is part of your marketing strategy, or you can start marketing your book with free methods like on social media. And that is basically how you make these types of kids maze books. And that's exactly how how that book from my last video that makes $2,500 per month was also created using tools like this and just adding a lot of really fun creative elements that are appealing to children. It is fairly simple and easy to do. It will just take some time to really make these pages creative and create a story behind each maze puzzle. It doesn't have to be anything complicated. With kids, it's simple is best, just so that it is really fun and interesting for the kids. The more time you spend with this part, the better, in my opinion, the more time you spend with this, the better the reviews you'll get from customers, which all just helps with increasing sales of your book in the future. I hope you enjoyed this kind of video where I showed you how to create a certain kind of book. I don't make them too often, but if these kind of videos are something that you are interested in and you would like to see the process behind creating more books and different kinds of books being made, then please let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.